Hey, what's up everyone? How's it going? Today is Saturday, April 9th, 2022. And, um, yeah, we'll get into my tags in the streets in the city of New York, why I did them so big. Now you guys asked that question. I have a simple answer for that. But I uh, also want to mention that it's actually one year, one whole year that I've been doing um, these podcasts on YouTube. And it's been great. It really has. And it's been real fun stuff. I enjoy it. Uh, I believe April 12th is when I signed up. Yeah, last year. So it's getting to one year. Mm. Yeah, it's been cool. Yeah. Alright, so, um, yeah, thank you guys for following and subscribing and all that stuff. Cool shit. Alright, now, um, alright. Now, you see the way this whole thing plays out? Actually, I'm going to change my theme. There's a, a bunch of you guys also asked. Why I refer to graffiti as a game. And I mean a game as, in a sense, like a sport. Might as well throw that in there. And because it really is. It's like graffiti is one field where you could kind of fluff your feathers and walk around like a peacock and be like, uh huh, uh huh, that's right, I'm badass. And there's really no real repercussions for it. Like, when all said and done, I don't give a fuck who is the mayor or who ain't. Yeah, of course, during the Giuliani administration, you know, coming down hard, people were going to Rikers Island for it. But still, it's not like you're going to line up on some, like, cool hand Luke type shit or, like, the Birdman of Alcatraz. I mean, you're never going to see daylight again or something. I mean, it's a stupid bullshit charge. So graffiti is one area where you can strut your stuff, you know, so to say. And that's an attraction to me when it comes to graffiti. I like that. As uh, street kids, like I said, criminals. And uh, let me try to give you an example of what I'm trying to say. People, criminals rather, they like being recognized for their skills. I mean, uh, like skill set, like Liam Neeson, right? And taken. I have a special kind of skill set. Anyway, there's actually honesty in that uh, Thomas Crown affair. <clears throat> yes, it's a rich billionaire man that gets off on stealing paintings. And that's the same. Yeah, it goes that way with criminals. <clears throat> the guy, uh, what the fuck, I forget his name, man. But when they came out with those new hundred dollar bills, and they made the hologram on them, and the double inks with the fucking uh, strip in it and all this and that. And, oh, one person, probably many people throughout the world, but one person was actually very successful in, in making that. Like, he got that $100 bill in his fucking hand. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, this is freaky shit, man, I gotta figure it out. I can do it. And he went through all types of crazy shit. Took a couple of years, but the motherfucker did it, man. He counterfeited those new hundred dollar bills. I think he got locked up for it and shit, but yeah, he did it. And it was just when asking him, I've actually saw like an interview or something about that. And I'm going back a long time and a lot of it might not be what it is from what I'm saying, because I'm just thinking and trying to remember. I don't even remember where I heard this or saw it. Probably a documentary or something like that, 60 Minutes or some shit like that. Or maybe I read it when the case was going on or something. I don't remember, but it's going back. I can't go back too far because those bills, I believe, were made in 90, I don't know. Anyway, this one particular human being figured out a way to get that $100 bill. Made it exactly. I believe he used um, paper from a phone book. Taped it together, put the fucking thing in it, did the hologram ink and everything, board ink or something like that. Yeah, paint I think they used. He didn't even use ink for the actual hologram shit. But anyway, to make a long story short, I asked him why, and he said, Shh, because that, that's like I'll be famous. <laughs> like that's what the dude said, like, yo, I'm dead serious. You could Google who I'm talking about. I don't remember his name. Like I said, I'm going back. But he's like, no, nah, man, that is like some, like, history, yo. <laughs> like, and it's true. It's like, Every lock that is made, there is a criminal out there trying to break that shit. Just so he could say, I did that shit. Seriously. Now, in that sense, like I said, the Thomas Crown Affair, it's all fake shit. I mean, there's some billionaire guy running around stealing a couple million dollars worth of shit. Why? You know, for the thrill of it. It's just like, um, not parkour, but that other shit. Like the Adrenaline Junkies. Uh, 
with the fucking um, jumping off bridges with the bungee cords and shit. And, I mean, yeah, it's it's a, it's it's a thrill, and you get addicted to that shit. You really fucking do, man. Like you could get addicted to living under pressure, and once that pressure is not there, you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, like if everything is so smooth and everything's good, you're in a beautiful relationship, your girlfriend ain't complaining, and you're like, huh, and almost subconsciously, you'll fuck around and create a nightmare. <laughs> like, yeah, but, yeah, man, weird shit, man. Believe me, I, I look into my head, man. I know I, I tick all kinds of crazy ways. But, that, yeah, I just noticed that through my trials and errors in life. But, graffiti is one thing that you can actually strut your stuff and get away with it or not, whatever. I had a good long run, man. I was out there like fucking John Travolta and then uh, Saturday Night Fever strutting my shit. Uh, yeah, for a hot minute. So, now, I did those big, huge tags. Huge fucking tags. I put a few pictures on. Uh, yeah. Big tags. There's actually one I'll use as a thumbnail. Sammy D3 took that picture. That was on like Houston and Broadway or whatever. West Houston where that park is. Yeah, I'd be out now. Front Street waving my cock around. That's the way I looked at it. Like a peacock, you know? Yeah, if I didn't do a huge fucking tag in an insanely busy area, then I'll do a whole fucking row in them. I call that machine gun style. Like, you got me? So yeah, there was a reason behind that. And I guess... And one said it was like me, I'm alpha, you know, like fuck that, you know, and it was also like a scare tactic. Like people fuck with me, I, you know, they ain't nothing tell me. Like if you really look at when I went ape shit and you look at when people were fucking with me, it's side by side. You know, someone threatening me, oh yo, this, that. That's where I'm going to write more graffiti. Like when I had the whole city, all five boroughs, coming on to me and coming after me. I was like, oh, what? Okay. Nah, 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 nah. They're like, boom, 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 boom. Like, in your face, fuck off. Like, for real, I just went ape shit. Like, at the most times when someone would normally be hiding or be worrying about these kind of problems, I went ape shit. You know, and in a sense, like, no matter what they throw at me, I just went ape shit more. And that's the way I saw it. And it's like, Yo, we out here like this and coming after him, coming into his neighborhood, writing on his mother's building, this, that, blah, blah, and he's just out there going more crazy. You know, actually going apeshit. Like, like he seems to not be worried. And that was the image I was pushing off on people's heads. But not to lie to you, I really wasn't worried. Like, honestly, look back. Look at all the graffiti movies uh, that are actually of real writers, documentaries. Look at all them, look at all the pictures you could find of graffiti writers from that era. And you know what I'm saying? And then it's just like, they're like little bitches, y'all. <laughs> I think there was nothing to fucking worry about. <laughs> like, for real. Like, I, that, like, yeah, like, they were like, nah, you know, like, these are like skinny little blue chested bitches, Pete. They weren't built like that. So I really didn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, it's not like I was a bully, because honestly, I, yeah, I did start shit, and yes, I'm a bully, but once again, that's me strutting my shit, like a peacock, you know what I'm saying? I'm out there saying, yeah, I'm going to do that, and what you going to do about it? And you get me? And then I'm like, oh, you're going to try to do something about it? Okay. Blah, 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 blah. And that's the graffiti, and that's how it rolls into motion. So, with these big, huge fucking tags I would do, with all the beef and the problems I had, it looks like I'm out there on a boat fly fishing. You get me? Like, you motherfuckers are dragging your asses through all types of shit. I'm out there like I'm on a Sunday morning drive. Yeah, that was the purpose behind that shit, the big tags. Yeah, it's almost like uh, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler, when he would put all the heads on the spikes, or leading up, what was it, uh, two, three miles? I think. I'm dead fucking serious. Dracula, the guy they call Dracula. Yeah, it was like three fucking miles of fucking skulls on spikes. Really, it was just the heads. He would cut off people's heads and put them leading up to like his area, like his castle and shit like that, like the main road into his little town and shit. Yeah, and that was a scare tactic. And people look at that shit and like, I don't know if I want to go in there. And this apocalypse now, uh, uh, Colonel Coots, whatever. Uh, 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 what the fuck? Marlon Brando. Remember that part? Yeah. 
Yeah, Colonel Coop or something like that when they come in and there's like all these dead bodies hanging over. We're at the bottom of the river now. Yeah, just that. You remember when the boat comes in, Apocalypse Now? Yeah, same fucking thing. It's a scare tactic. I mean, I'm out there doing these big, huge tanks. You know, I'm fucking doing me. You know, you gotta realize, I was kind of like a lone wolf. Like, if I ain't fucking around with many people outside my circle. Yeah, if they, they weren't people I knew, like, and hung out with. But that's why I always had just one person that I would constantly go with. Like, Justin, I went with him for many years. Uh, R.E., I went with him for like 12 years. And in them periods of time, you really won't see me mix it up with anyone else. I get one partner, I stick to him, and I tear shit up. Bottom line. Yeah, that's the way it was. And I would do a bunch of tags, too. R.D., 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 R.D. And I just love doing tags. It was almost like a... Hmm, you know, like you hit... I've explained that in the past podcasts and shit like that, but... Yeah, it was just like, at that moment, it's like, as you're doing the tech, it's like I would look around, and it would be like, just, like, real tranquil, almost, not like, a, to sound weird or nothing, but like you're back in your mother's womb or something, you know, it's just such a comfortable feeling for me, and I just, more or less, after the tank, and I step back and look at him like, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 fucking hey, yeah, definitely, those feelings right there is what it's about, like, them seconds, minutes, within just that adrenaline and that rush, like, you know, is the cops going to come around the corner, I, you know, I got this, you know, oh shit, yeah, this is what my mindset is, as I'm actually doing a day, thinking about the cops, Hoping my fucking lookout, which that's why I say I stick with one person, because then there's one person to blame, and you could be like real hard on them so that shit don't happen again. You'd be like, oh man, come on, what the fuck, you know, this, that, blah, 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 and vice versa. If I fuck up, and, and there's problems occur with them, they could be like, yo, Rob, you fucked up, you dropped the ball. No matter what, you know, you can't be out there talking to a girl or taking a piss or something, you gotta let that person know. You know, I ain't gonna be looking out for a couple of seconds. You follow me? Yeah. So yes, it falls directly on someone. So when that responsibility is on that particular person, it becomes very important that they perform their fucking job. Bottom line, you still got the thought yet. You don't want to take too long, so you don't like this. In your mind, is the cops coming? I'm looking at windows because I don't even have to look at the wall like I've explained in the past. I know what I'm doing on the wall. I'm at this point, what, 30 years? It's her body, 40, going 30, 20, whatever years it is, you figure eight years on the subway. I wrote graffiti on the MTA subway system for eight years. I'm talking about the eight years that led up to the buff. I've also fucked around a little here and there, but I don't even count that shit. That's just me having fun on the clean trains. You get me? So I don't count that shit. I mean, you know, it's just bubble letters and stupid snot shit. You know, I never did nothing much. Whole car, yeah. The people that have passed away, yes. Done that. Now, I don't know where the fuck I was, man. Y'all fucked me up here. Yeah, I do big fucking tags, man. Big ass fucking tags. Yeah. I was on a roll for a hot minute there, man. I lost my concentration. But, now we got that covered, right? Big tags, the reasons behind it. And you go at it with the beef and the palm. Yeah. Can't think of nothing else. I'll put the pictures on. Now, I, I, I could describe the pictures. That's <laughs> actually the purpose of this thing. Right, now, on the big picture that you'll see me, I'm holding a bicycle. And D3 took that picture from afar. Big, huge ID. I'm in the middle. And you can see it's a big ass RD tag. And yeah, that's like on Houston, on West Houston Street. I believe that's when D3 quit smoking cigarettes. That was 2011 or 2012. You would have to ask him, D3. He's on Instagram, he's on here. He's got D3 TV on YouTube, actually. A Rikers Island story. He's D3 TV. My boy D3, Sammy. Grew up with him. Love him like a brother. <laughs> so, yeah. He took the picture. I did a big pad tag. Stood in front of it. He, you know? And that was that. What do you want me to say about it? Yeah, it silver spray paint. I believe it was one of the big silver cans. Yeah. 
and um, I don't know. I, I have a bunch of pictures I'm going to put on, but I can't just think of a picture off the top of my head and stop talking about it unless I actually have it in front of me. But, and I don't know what picture I'm going to pick to put on. So I'm going to put a bunch of pictures. Not a bunch of pictures. Actually, let me just put that one particular picture on. All right? We'll talk about some other shit next time. Because yeah, this is wrapping up, man. And we've been at this thing, man. Like I said, one whole year. I've been doing this YouTube thing. And I actually stopped during the summer, which I'm going to do again within the next couple of months. Uh, you figure uh, around June, I'm going to announce that, you know, I'm going on summer break. That's it. Because it's summer, it's nice weather. I like to hang out and do my thing. I don't want to sit here being a slave to this shit. You know, having a, oh, yeah, i got to make a video. i got to make a video, you know. If it becomes like work and it's not fun no more, then it, I'm going to lose interest in it. And I don't want to do that. So... I've decided, and my son and me, because my son is actually a team effort, the Dyer Boys, you know, so he puts the stuff on and edits it, all that, I mean, so we both agreed that in the summertime we're not going to do this, and uh, I, I like that, because then I can hang out, do my thing, and I don't have to worry about it, but last summer, I did do a couple of them, and stick them on there, just bored or something like that, I think it was raining for a couple of days straight, so I was like, yeah, let me do a podcast, and I put it on here or something, I'll probably do that also this summer, like I said, the same, the last video, I'm going to go on until June, June-ish, middle of June, first couple of weeks of June, yeah. probably around when the kids would get out of school, not that I have a kid that's in school, it's just like use as a reference, yeah, yeah. Like when summer starts. First day of summer, I could do it. Nah, yeah, we'll figure it out, man. Well, I, but yeah, I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a good time here. And a lot of you people that say, oh, yeah, you could get this and that and monetize and all that. Yeah, I was eligible for that pretty early on, actually. I, I got a thousand followers and the 4,000 hours watch time they came through and all. And I've looked into it, but like I said, I'm not, it's not really what I care about. But it's important because the more I do stuff like that, the more my. Uh, content gets spread out more and stuff like that but I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to ask people to like subscribe on here and stuff like that I think that's kind of corny like I feel like I'm begging you or something so I'm not going to do that like it just I, I feel like it I don't know I guess it fucks with my pride in a sense where I feel like I'm uh I'm begging, yeah, it would be a term, I don't beg, you can't, that's not cool, you know, you don't want to be known as a beggar, man, that's a bad, <laughs> that's a bad title, man, you don't want to wear that hat, fucking beggar, yo, you the beggar, <laughs> that's funny shit, so yeah, we got that one picture on, I'm going to put two pictures on, I'll also put one on where it's the machine gun style, like I said, arty, 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 perfect row, I'll do that shit down the whole block, a lot of my main accomplishments are, uh, goals I would achieve is always trying to do an R&D like I've actually never really came across a wall that I couldn't do the whole wall yeah out in Long Island I did one on the back of a fucking shopping center I swear man that shit was like the size of a parking lot a big RD tag with a big fat fucking black man like that shit that comes out like this yeah I could do it I, I've never ran out of space like I could do an RD like as big as the wall I mean don't get me wrong like honestly yeah you give me a fucking cherry picker and a wall that's like a couple of blocks long I'll fucking do it I'll do an RD tag that big yeah I, I, I that's kind of like my strength I always try to do it huge yeah it's kind of it I, I, I've honestly always have been able to do it bigger than the spaces at hand even down near the Jacob Javits Center, I remember before that place was built on the West Side Highway, I'd done RD tags down there that were like half a block long. Seriously, like half a fucking block long. You look at that big paint roller tag I did with Baron on top of that sawmill, not saw, rice. They have rice in the fucking thing. Along the Gowanus or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know where it is. I know it faces the highways. All I know was back in the days when I was living in Staten Island, Timmy Barron. So Joe Rob, I got a good spot. So, all right, what do you want me? Let go this, that, little bit, come by. Midnight, one o'clock in the morning, meet me over here, this, that. And I go, I get off the train, I meet him. We run across some baseball field or something like that in some park. 
climb up some shit, we'll run up a bunch of stairs, and we do some shit. Who <laughs> <laughs> by the way? But yeah, that shit ran. I think it's still there, actually. I know someone turned my they they turned my R into a H. But I'll get into all that shit some other time. And someone I don't know what happened with it. But yeah, and then someone actually yeah. Anyway, yeah, I could do a whole big thing about Timmy one day if you guys come and ask. You know, Timmy is barren. Yeah. I've kind of got into him a lot on my life story, because he was a good friend of mine, him and Irish, Emmett, yeah, I like them guys, good friends, yeah, we used to hang out, yeah, yeah, all right, a lot of you guys are asking me to do one about cost, also, cost, K-R-T, and I'll tell you, I know, cost used to come and hang out with us in the park, I'd come down to the park, like, I wrote graffiti with him, yeah, for maybe over a year, almost two years, maybe, or possibly two years straight, yeah, we wrote graffiti, but I mean, he would also, he hung out with all of us, like all, like the people, like, he's a criminal, man, like, just like I said, like men, RTW, he would come hang out in the park and shit like that, yeah, you know, he was a criminal, like, cause he knew all of us, he knew, it. like, he would hang out with this one or that one, or sometimes JJ, or this one or that one, you know, I mean, I'd write graffiti with him, but he was actually, like, one of them dudes, like I said, people that would come in and they'd be sitting on the bench, like criminals, they'd be out there scheming and thinking about ways of stealing shit and this and that, and, you know, they'd come hang out and, you know, that, that's what we did, that was what was amusement to us, we'd go to that park and there was a lot of schemes were hatched there, and yeah, him, a lot of, like I said, Alpo would come by, yeah, a lot of people, man, yeah, people from all over the place, the kids from the west side, the Irish kids, yeah. Those would wind up becoming like the head of that fucking shit, but they're in jail now, but yeah, they wind up taking over all that shit with the West Side with the Irish and shit like that. That's after all that shit with John Gotti and shit, yeah? Those fucking dudes, a lot of the people, and I hung out with a lot of fucking people, but they all came to that park, <laughs> and Cost was one of them. Yeah, he would hang out with this one and that one, and Cost would do a lot of shoplifting, you know, he was a good shoplifter, a good guy, I can't say that bad about him. As far as it goes with any drug addictions or anything like that, I do believe he drank a couple beers or something, but this is back when we were teenagers and shit, you know? I don't remember any bad things, but I could do one on him. I, I like him. He was always a stand-up dude. Yeah, he was quiet, of course. I could never say, uh, you know. He was very quiet and calm. He was never like, rah, rah, rah! You know, he was always quiet, calm, very calculating, very intelligent, good thief. Yeah, I, yeah, I could do one on him. Yeah, it was all around straight up dude, man. Cost, yeah. Kept to himself, you know. Yeah, it was good, yeah, good dude. Alright, people, let me wrap it up, man. Like I said, one year of me doing this shit, huh? <laughs> up your name, who would have thought? Hey, I, I went through this thing and I remember what I forgot, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I was talking about walking, you know, fluffing your feathers like a peacock when you write graffiti. And that is actually a style. It's almost like, it dawned on me when I was starting to talk about cost, KRT, and he's a perfect example. He makes graffiti look easy. That's a way it is. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to say, and I could use him as a perfect example. He'd just come through, and it's like, you'd be out there putting in all your hard work, and then all of a sudden, it's like, it's all just... Like, wow, like someone comes in harder, you know, like cost or something like that. Just tears shit up, makes you feel like, you know, like shit, I really thought I was putting it in. So that's kind of like the purpose behind big, huge tags and the machine gun style. Arty, 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 arty. That's the purpose behind it. It's, uh, yeah, shock value. The wow, the wow factor. That's the word, wow factor. There's a style in vandalism. You see, just like the styles of pieces, you know, you got all this shit about, uh, levels and this and that. And in vandalism, there's also a style. You know, it's in places, spots that you pick, size of things, and hand styles, of course, you know. Yeah, yeah like that, what, Broadway elegant, and yeah, this, that, and blah, 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 all types of different shit. You got the shit with the platforms, and, you know, all types of stuff. So, yeah, just, I'm talking about tags, like, that evolved since, like, the 70s, or even, like, Philadelphia, and, like, New York City in like the 70s and stuff, you look at like Stay High and stuff, and that's stylish, you know, I mean, what the hits, they weren't even called tags, hits, yeah, you look at all that and what it's evolved into and then kind of devolved just into speed, and I guess back then there really was no Vandal Squad and shit like that, so they kind of had free runs so they could take their time doing their tags, 
like me with RD, it's quick, it's easy, fast. Um, I could do that shit in the blink of a fucking eye. But the selection of spots becomes important. Like fucking boom, like right fucking smack, like 40 deuce or something. Like, Bob, like, come off with some big old shit. People are like, oh man, how the fuck he do that shit? I can't even fucking do it. A little tag. I can't even put up a sticker. And he's over here doing a half a fucking block long. How is this even possible? Yeah. Wow factor. That's what it is. You do a big ass RD tag. Fuck yeah. Right up in their face, you know? But you see what it is? is it's like, um, how does Lace put it? Uh, uh, soft target, but um, highly visible soft target. <laughs> Some shit like that. Lace, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's like it's an easy spot to get that people wouldn't think, but then after you get it, it's like all eyes are on it kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's like you know strutting your stuff. Like yeah, you see, like I was explaining before about criminals, I was actually going somewhere with that. In my era, or my circle of writers from the subways and even transforming onto the streets, the early years of the streets when it was tags, like I said before, the fill-ins and stuff, and even after when the fill-ins came out and stuff, but early on, right after the subways went dead and the streets kind of started getting smashed, those are all criminals, man. Most people, yeah, there's out there, you know, shoplifters or whatever it is and this and that, but what it comes down to is it's like a stigma to you as the criminal. You got me like PK is a perfect example. PK, no. I don't know if he wants to run around calling him a criminal and shit, but in an example, you know, it's, I didn't even know his real name. It's like his initials, PK, it's got nothing to do with it, you know. I didn't know his name like shit after the trains were cleaned many years later. And I'm like, what? And I thought that shit was his initials. Yeah. <laughs> For real, many years later, decades later, I find out his real name. I call him PK all the time. But, you know, it's almost like the legend of PK, you know, it's like, yeah, yo, I heard he did this, he, you know, it's, um, what's the word, not like an urban legend or nothing like that, but PK is one I could say, like out in the story, you know, everyone's got a story about PK doing something, you get me, like, yeah, he did this, oh, he did this big, you know, blah, 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 over the highway he hung out or he climbed all the way up on this and did that and blah, 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 yeah, that goes with him, his reputation or whatever. So, in the area of a criminal, it's like, yeah, yo, yo, that shit he did up there, this, that, you know. Lee 3 is another good example. Lee 3 used to write Rose, and he used to write Lee 3, hit a lot of the insides, him, Jaff. Yeah, these are criminals that wrote graffiti, and it's kind of like, it's cool, you get me? It's hard to explain, man, it's weird shit, but when you're a teenager, it makes sense, man. It's like a bad kid, you know what I mean? I, you know, I'm in my 50s now. I'm trying to explain the, the mindset of a fucking teenager. But yeah, yeah it's hard. Um, it's not like showing off or, you know, like you got the guy who's stealing all the cars and shit and he gets all the girls and this and that. and uh, yeah, He's like the popular guy in the neighborhood, you know? Yeah, yeah it's hard to explain. But it's like a reputation, yo, yo, you heard this, that, you got me, uh, what would that be, uh, uh, fuck, man, I mean, I, you know, I should know this stuff, man, there is a word that would wrap that whole thing up, but maybe you guys could figure it out, and it's like a calling card, or, uh, but it's, a, it's like street kids, like your reputation as a teenager, and you know, like if you tell on someone or something like that, you're kind of like, yo, fuck that dude, he's a rat, you know? Yeah, and it's like the code of the street or something like that. And with that graffiti, it kind of amps up your props. There you go, your props. Yeah, that's what it does. And I don't know what it does nowadays, like what you guys have in goals, but I like any obstacle that came at me, I would... Love the challenge would be to say, and I would do what I gotta do. Yeah, that would be it. Like in the graffiti realm, and that would escalate my street cred, so to say. It's like I bump into people, you know, later on or something, doing some stupid shit, like you know, meters or whatever the fuck. 
stealing some shit or something like yo, I heard about that shit, yo, yo, I saw that shit you did, man, on <laughs> the fucking D train, yo, that shit, you know, blah, 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 it, it, it travels, and it, it, it adds to your reputation, I guess would be a way to put it, I mean, now you're looking at it as an adult, it's the stupidest shit out, but, I mean, as a teenager, that means everything to you, I mean, if you look at it like a child, uh, we'll talk about a female, I don't know, like all this gender stuff, but you look at a little girl, and her day goes like this, she wakes up in the morning, she eats a bowl of cereal, summer day, she don't have school this day, wakes up in the morning, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, goes, has a little lunch, mom says, how you doing, oh, okay, this, that, goes back out, jump rope, jump rope, jump rope, now she does this shit all fucking summer. And she goes back to school, then it goes to jump ropes after school, and this and that, and before you, you know, now all of a sudden this girl's 15, 17 years old, and all of a sudden jump rope's not that important no more now, she's listening to music, she's putting on nail polish, she's more interested in fashion, like the clothes that she's wearing, you get me? So nowadays that whole jump roping theory, it's got, it's not that important, it's not something she's doing anymore, like she's not doing it as much because she's picked up other hobbies and before you know it 20 years later she's like I don't even remember the last time I jump roped but it won't jump rope them thing by the time that girl's 30 40 years old she's like jump rope fuck I want jump rope for and that's kind of like what happens with a street kid however with me the graffiti part I kept going and going and going and my reasons for writing graffiti changed over the decades and I'll get into that next time I, you know otherwise it's kind of like I'm doing a whole graffiti life history all over again but you know we'll break into it and all but keep those good comments coming man it's good stuff a lot of you guys are asking me real good things I could do one about you know how you obtain the subway keys how I got the lion head keys and all that to actually get in the subway systems and stuff and I can even, uh, I don't know, I've been trying to get a sardine can thing to show you guys about what they are. I could probably find an image and, and download it on here or something like that. But, like, yeah, you go in stores and you ship that whole, like, it's an antiquated technology. It don't exist no more. It's outdated at this point. But, yeah, I could get, but a lot of good questions and a lot of good stuff. I'm happy. I'm, I'm writing it all down and I'm getting through it. Uh, one of you guys just commented, yo, you hit the nail right on the head, this, that, but yeah, keep them coming. I I could, like I said, I don't want to just sit here blobbing about stuff people don't care about, but if someone asks, or if enough people ask about one particular topic, yeah, I'll go on it, yeah. yeah. Alright, people, enjoy yourselves. This is actually a day later, after all that stuff that I was writing before, but, you know, uh, that, that I was talking about before, this is the next day, so right now it's actually Sunday, it's not Saturday anymore. But I watched through the video before my son he gets home from school. And he's going to post it. And I figured, yeah, let me add on a little more about that. <clears throat> but yeah, so as the decades go by, or as you're, I'm a child or a teenager, graffiti and the whole street cred, the reputation that you get and all that was very, very important to me. Yeah, especially since I was making money and stuff like that. You know, robbing and stealing. And uh, you don't want to have a bad reputation. You know, people got to be able to trust you and stuff. So, yeah, I went hard on that. Yeah, and then as later on in life, I haven't robbed or stole or done anything bad in decades, except for graffiti. I continue to write graffiti. Yeah, it's like you can still fluff your feathers, like I say, and be a peacock. And what the fuck are they gonna do if they actually catch you? But you know, I don't want to go sending out no negative vibes and shit. But peace.